Hey guys, this is Drew with Acoustic Collectibles. Welcome back to a brand new video. In this video, we're going to give you guys a tip on how to be a better coin dealer if you're starting out and also talk about Tyler Coin Show Day 2. What did we get? Uh, I think you'll like to see those, but let's get this video started. So at the Tyler Coin Club this weekend, I think they had over 1,200 people come through the doors, which for a smaller coin show like that, I think we have 35 dealers there. That's pretty big. Um, a, lot of, a lot of shows, they only hope to have like 500, or maybe sometimes 300. So getting 1,200 people there is a big feat for them. And congrats to uh, David and the whole team. But the tip that I wanted to give you guys today, especially if you're moving into coins as something of, you know, you want to deal in coins and you want to work with other people, is that uh, being a good dealer doesn't only start with having integrity, right? So people say, oh, there's bad dealers out there that take advantage of you for, uh, they want to pay you nothing for coins or they want to come to you and you, you know, they just, at any opportunity, they're looking to take advantage. And that's not even what I'm talking about in terms of being a good dealer or a not good dealer. What I'm talking about is, are you giving or are you not giving? And that, that literally stems from um, kind of our foundation of uh, what we believe as Christians. But when we go into the coin shows, we want to give to people as much as possible. Are we paying for their dinner? Are we asking them if they need something to drink? Can we help them move stuff even from their car to into the show? All these things you guys can do to not only, uh, you know, give, but be their friend, be someone that they can trust on, rely on. And then as you move more into the coin space, you're able to become friends with them, talk to them on the weekends, go, go hang out at a barbecue. All this stuff can happen and you can get, be more integrated in the coin business because you're willing to give of your time. Sometimes your treasure also, what do you make from a coin show? And are you investing it back in people that um, care a lot about you? And so look for those people when you're at coin shows. Are they people of higher integrity, but also are they givers? Do they want to give into you? Do they want to give you tips on what to buy? Do they want to sell coins to you? Um, just something that we learned this weekend uh, and it really drove home to us. And that's kind of how our business is starting to get off the ground. We're having a lot of people around us that want to uh, not only give to us, but we're giving back to them when we can. So if you guys want to use our coupon code down below, we have uh, a, a sale on raw coins. Use code raw5 at checkout to get 5% off raw coins. And I'm also going to include um, a free shipping code as well. We're going to have these until the end of the month. So uh, once the end of the month's over, we're going to have a new coupon code for you guys on specific items just to give back to you. But let's share with you guys some coins on what we bought this weekend. Um, just some really amazing pieces. So this is the span of all the coins that we picked up this weekend. A few tougher coins down here, but let's start right here. So Back to uh, the video that we shared with you on Saturday, we're trying to find coins that are spot free and nice looking with, with decent luster. Nice S mint, Walking Liberty half. There's a coin roll right on the eagle, as you can see. It's just kind of tearing across there, but other than that, pretty stellar coin. A little bit of an older holder too, you can't see the rim on it. Uh, a difficult type of coin here that we ran into also is a Drape Bus Quarter from 1806, graded VF20. Uh, there was a dealer there that wanted to sell this one at Gray Sheet because he had a few extra. And so picking up this coin and offering it to you guys is pretty cool because, you know, it is over $1,000, but it is super affordable for um, what people are looking for nowadays. And so uh, we bought a few other affordable coins as well because there's a lot of guys on our website that are trying to assemble sets. And a lot of it has to start with, you know, coins that are under $50. Here's a 1940S Mercury Dime, graded MS66. The reason why I bought this one is because it's nice and flashy, almost like a, you know, it started to be almost like proof-like, but not all the way there. Still a nice flashy coin. Some polish lines on the reverse here on, on both sides of the, uh, of the details. And it's got some nice toning as well. So picking up coins with a little bit of character like that is pretty cool. 
about a few rattlers here. And uh, this is a 1941 uh, Washington Quarter. It's a proof 65. A lot of these kind of come from proof sets and people that just, uh, you know, broke them up over time. And this one is pretty cool. I try to buy Morgan dollars like we were talking about in the previous video in, in rattler holders. I bought this 810 because it's a little bit of a tougher date in 64 and up. And so when I bought this coin, I thought it was nice because of the luster. Are you guys enjoying today's video so far? If you are, make sure to leave a like. It really helps us move out and find more people to talk about numismatics with. Uh, make sure you guys comment what your favorite coin was from uh, this video so far. And are you guys going to a and Let us know. We're not, but we would be excited to hear uh, some stories from you. Make sure to subscribe for more videos like this, and let's get back to today's video. This coin's rather well struck as well, as you can see kind of from the hairline there. And then when you flip over the coin, it has, it has some nice kind of breast feathers still. And so just everything about this coin was pretty nice. I'm glad we picked it up. Uh, ended up picking up a 1909 Indian head scent, graded AU58. Not crazy luster, as you can see there. That's how kind of most Indian head scents are, but um, an early date, Indian head scent like this is a little bit easier for me to sell. I'm sorry, it's a later day Indian head scent. It's easier for me to sell. Kind of the the exchange from the 1909 Indian head scent to the 1909 SVDB. That's something that uh, people kind of latch onto in terms of numismatics. And so I bought this SVDB at the show as well, just because we had one on AU55 that ended up selling right before we went in. And this coin presented itself for an affordable price. I mean, buying one like this uh, is pretty cool because you know you just always want to have one available if you can and so when one sells and then one is is presented that's something that's pretty cool and uh, we're very happy we were able to meet Barry. Barry uh, is a guy that deals a lot in bullion and doesn't really do too much in kind of you know numismatics and so we ended up buying that one for a good price along with this 79.0 looking forward to share that one with you. Here's a 1913 Buffalo Nickel, graded MS66. It's a Type 1. Uh, I bought this one because it's an earlier date Buffalo Nickel with really nice detail on the coin. And it also has a little bit of toning. As you can see by the reverse, it's a little bit of like a rotated die. I think probably 5%, nothing crazy. But the amount of detail on this coin, how well struck it was, really did, uh, you know, really did jump out at me. I don't really want to buy ones that are too common of a grade, but... Mint State 66, I felt, was a good place to, to start and add a few buffaloes to the website. Picked up this 1923S uh, Peace Dollar. The reason why is because the luster on the coin is really nice. I mean, it's an S-Mint uh, coin, and so that's what you're going to kind of see most times. But really nice luster on this coin, and I do like the eye appeal of it. And so, uh, yeah, really cool. I also bought another Lincoln scent here. This is a 1914D. Uh, the reason why I bought this one is because I feel like the obverse of the coin is really pronounced. You can really see Lincoln there and all the details really well. Sometimes when you get a lower grade, you know, 14D, it's just it's just beaten to heck or there's just not much detail. And so this one, I felt like it was a nice, strong, a fine 15. And uh, it's a little bit scuffed up on the reverse here in terms of the holder, but still nice key date for the series. Here are the more Difficult coins that we ended up running to at the show, ones that we are trying to move into over time. Yes, offering these coins that are like more affordable, like the 1909 or the Mercury Dime is something that we want to provide for people. We also want to, you know, maybe placate to people that want to spend a little bit more money. This is a 1929S, uh, SOQ. I felt the luster was pretty nice on the coin. It's not a full head, but which is okay, but... I mean, I'm in state 60, 66 SOQ um, for under $1,000 is something that I like to pick up because it is a really nice grade. Love the design of the coin. And uh, I mean, come on, can't go wrong with that. Here's a coin that kind of was a head scratcher for me. So this is 1879-0 um, Morgan Dollar in an OGH holder. Someone ended up paying like $1,800 for one of these on stacks or something like that. I'll try to include... Uh, the comp of this to the right of this coin. It's very odd how uh, some of these comps are so out of whack and someone that's willing to pay some crazy prices. And so when I saw that comp and uh, Barry offered this coin to us, I thought, you know what, 
I don't like to buy Morgans too often, but this one really was nice. The O Mint's a little bit tougher over uh, over the other mints like the S Mint and the P Mint. And so uh, definitely a cool coin for sure. Not going to make a whole lot of money on it, but did want to offer it because those comps are a little bit strange. Here's an 1826 Cat Bust Half, rated AU58. I talked a little bit about this on our Instagram. I like this one because it's, you know, it was in the wild for a few days, but it also still has that really nice mint state luster to the coin. And it is in the 20s, which is pretty cool. And so finding a coin like this, being making it being able to offer it is something that I like to do. Trying to move more into old type coins because um, I feel like as a coin dealer and as you progress, you're going to move into coins like this because it's just the nature of the business. A lot of the times when we were selling in the beginning, Morgan dollars was what we were working on. And then over time, we started to really like the history of the coins and we moved more into stuff like the cat bust half or stuff like the drape bust quarter. And so here's another coin that we bought at the show. Probably one of my favorites. This is an 1862 proof seated dime. It's great at proof 63 cameo because it has a you know, nice cameo appeal to the coin. It also has some really nice color. And so everything about this coin really uh, made me excited to buy it. The cool thing also about this coin is that there's only 10 in Cameo at PCGS. They didn't hand out too many of these in terms of uh, giving it that designation. So someone going for a Cameo set for Seated Dimes is going to want this coin. And uh, they think this is the lowest pop, which means this is the lowest one graded Cameo at, at PCGS. The rest are graded higher. And so... Uh, just a lot of great things about that coin. A few aspects to make some money if you were uh, to look out for cameo designations on seated coins. Here's a few other, you know, a few other Mercury dimes. Like I said, going back to uh, offering coins that are more affordable, it's great to do stuff like this because someone may try to work on a Mercury dime set, and a lot of these are going to be under 50 bucks. So, thank you guys for watching this video. Thank you guys for uh, looking at these coins. We hope you enjoy them. And we will see you guys in the next one.